everyone, this is Carla and welcome back to the studio and thank you for joining me for another episode of Throwback Thursday. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. The idea of behind Throwback Thursdays is I pull out my retired stash and use it. Some of this stash that I got actually never saw ink to some of these stamp sets. And that would be an example for what we're going to use in this episode. So I give you a little bit of inspiration. If you have the set, then you can pull it out and you can create some more projects um, with that set. You know, basically, you know, you don't really know what to do with it and it kind of sits on a shelf and then you kind of forget about it. But that's what the whole idea behind Throwback Thursday is all about. So for this episode, I will be using the Wishing You Well stamp set. Now, this is a standalone stamp set. It did not bundle with any punches or with any dies. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with this set. And I'm also going to be doing a pretty cool technique on our first card. So the first card that I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing a technique that's called the baby wipe technique. It's pretty cool. You need um, some baby wipes and you'll need some ink, uh, some ink refills or reinkers. And for this one, because we're in September, we're wow, we're more than halfway through September already. So basically September, October, November is all about fall. And then, of course, we got Christmas and it seems like time has just really been flying by. So for my first card, I have a piece of berry burst that measures eight and a half by five and a half. And I've scored it at four and a quarter. I have a piece of very vanilla. This measures five and a quarter by four. Then I have um, some scraps here. So I have two scraps of very vanilla. And then I also have a scrap of pebble path. So like I mentioned, this uh, card, I'm going to be doing the baby wipe technique. Let's see. I'm going to go and take my card base. I'll fold and burnish that and I'm going to set that aside. Now for this technique, I'm going to bring in the case that I use for my uh, chamois and I'm going to grab baby wipe. I'm kind of like to the end of this package here. I'm going to take one out. Actually, this was kind of dried out and I added some water to it so they were wet because it works best when they're wet and not dry. Okay, so I'm just going to take my wipe and I'm going to fold this into into a quarters. We're basically creating like an ink pad. And when we stamp into this, what it's going to do on the stamp, it's going to be variegated with different colors of ink. So what I'm using for this project, I have my reinkers of crushed curry, pumpkin pie, old olive and berry burst. So I'm going to take my reinkers and I'm going to add a few random drops onto my white. And let's take the next color. And we got our crushed curry. Okay, and then we have pumpkin pie. I'm going to kind of fill in these areas that there's no ink. I want to try and get this filled in. So that way, when I go to stamp into this, it will be full. There won't be no, you know, empty spots. 
Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for just a moment to kind of let that ink spread out and fill that all up. Now it's good to do it in a in an empty stamp case like this because this ink will seep through as you can see. So by doing it this way, you're keeping your work surface clean. So I'm going to bring in this little scrap piece. Now this I'm not going to be stamping in that. I am going to use a retired color lovely lipstick and I'm going to try and close this. Okay, and then there is this uh, bow. It's kind of got a translucent look to it. And since my ink pad is not overly inky, this will stamp really great. If your ink pad is too inky, what will happen, your, your image won't show that detail. Now, with the, with the stamp set, there is not, like I said, there is no coordinating set of dies to it. And for this bow, I do want to cut that out. So I'm going to set this aside because I will fussy cut it. I, I'm also doing a little bit of dry embossing and for this um, larger piece of my very vanilla I am going to use the tasteful textile 3d embossing folder and I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to do that um, in a moment along with fussy cutting that bow and then with these pieces on this very vanilla I'm going to stamp my uh, wreath this is just basically a, a greenery wreath. And I'm going to then die cut it using the stylish shapes dies. Now I'm using these circles. And for the larger one here, I'm going to die cut my pebble path. And then once I stamp this image here, then I will die cut it using this one that's the next size smaller. So now my ink is kind of like all mixed together there. So I'm going to do, what I like to do is I like to kind of do a little practice run here before I put it on my cardstock just to see how this is going to look. So I'm going to press my stamp into that. And I'm trying not to move it around because I don't want all the colors to shift around. And then I'm going to stamp this on my scrap paper just to see. And you can see you've got a whole lot of variegation there on the colors. So I'm going to clean this. Make sure that's kind of dry. And then I'm going to put my stamp back into that again. I'm going to let it sit there for just a moment so it picks up some of that ink. Now this is a technique that you can do in with many different stamps if you want like a variegation of color you just want to be mindful of the colors that you use that those colors when they come together they don't create like a muddy brown type of color so these colors they they're just like a really pretty fall combination of colors okay and then i'm going to stamp this right in the middle i'll hold it there for just a moment Okay, and that's what that looks like. It's got a nice variation of color there. Now on this, you can use this to uh, do a bunch of projects. If, um, you know, if you're going to mass produce anything, then you, that'll work um, well. And then you should be, if this happens to dry, if you spray some water on it, it'll reactivate the ink. So then you can still create with it even more. Okay, so then like I said, this is this piece here, I'm gonna die cut with this um, style, this circle style of shape. And with that, I am going to be right back.
Okay, so let me bring in all my pieces. Now, in the, at the beginning, I realized before I went to go and emboss this, I did want to stamp a greeting. So I stamped the, just the note in Pebble Path ink. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my seal. And I am going to add some onto the back of this. And I'm going to place this on my card base. This was one of those embossing folders that it just has that really subtle uh, texture in it. And I evidently must have ink on my fingers because I'm seeing a little bit of pink on there. But I'm going to be kind of covering some of that up. That's the one thing when you start with the reinkers and all that. Sometimes you end up with the ink on your fingers. Okay, so I'm going to take some adhesive. I'm going to add it onto the back of my very vanilla circle. And then I'm going to center this onto my pebble path circle. Now, I'm going to kind of look at my wreath and see where maybe there's a spot that maybe doesn't look as good as the rest of it. And that's where I'm going to take my bow and I'm going to add that onto that. So I'm going to bring in my dimensionals and I'm going to add one on either side of this bow. And I'm going to place that right down here. Okay, and then I'm going to add dimensionals to the back of this. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this was one of those sets that I was kind of late in getting it. And I got this as it was retiring. And yeah, I got it and I just never had the opportunity to play with it yet. So this is actually the first time. Okay, so for my embellishments, I'm going to bring in some embellishments that are currently available in our in our new holiday mini catalog these are the faux glass dots and this is part of the splendid autumn suite of products so you have what looks like pumpkin pie uh, that could be crushed curry or wild wheat old olive or mossy meadow and then maybe like cajun craze or even cherry cobbler uh, the colors are not listed on the packaging, and I don't think they're in the catalog, but if you go to the website and you bring them up, it lists the colors there. Typically, I'll write it on the back of the packaging, but I didn't get a chance to do that this time. So I'm going to take these ones here that are more orange, and I'm going to add a large and then two small on this. Okay, so there is the first card. Now, again, if you're going to stamp a greeting on this, it's best to do it before you emboss that piece of cardstock. Okay, so now on to our second card. Okay, so for my second card, we're not going to be doing that technique again. We're just going to be doing some stamping. So I'm going to start off with a piece of wild wheat. This measures eight and a half by five and a half. I've scored it at four and a quarter. I have a piece of Cajun craze. This measures, uh, let's see, it is five and a quarter by four. And then I have a piece of basic beige. This measures five and one eight by three and seven eighths. So we got some really nice fall colors going on here. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to fold and burnish my card base. Okay, and then my piece of Cajun Craze, I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of this. I'll put this on my card base, like so. Kind of get it centered. 
Okay, I'll set that aside. Now on this piece here, I'm going to stamp the bouquet that's in that set. And I got some of the flowers to put over that. And then we're going to bring in the bow again. And then there's also a greeting that I'm going to stamp. Again, you if you're stamping on something you're going to emboss, it's better to stamp before because then the paper is going to be textured and, and your stamping won't come out as good. Um, my greeting is going to say, sending you our thoughts and prayers. And the color inks that I'm going to use in this, I'm going to use Rich Razzleberry and Cajun Craze, Mossy Meadow, and Wild Wheat. So we got a really nice set of fall colors going on here. So I'm going to start off with my Wild Wheat. I'm going to ink up this bouquet. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp this right over here on the left hand side, like so. Okay, what's nice about this stamp, it does have that um, variegation where you have some areas that are both light and faded. Are dark and faded. Okay, then I'm going to take my Cajun craze and I'm going to stamp these flowers. Make this up. And I'm going to stamp that right over the bouquet. There's no exact placing of where these go. Okay, I'm just going to kind of clean this a little bit so I don't accidentally get ink on anything. Okay, and then on this bow, I'm going to bring in my rich Razzleberry ink. Okay, I'm going to ink up this bow. Now the easiest way to line up this bow is just looking at the center area of the bow. And I'm going to stamp that right over this right part right here on the bouquet where it's kind of bunched together. And so we got that. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp the greeting in Mossy Meadow. Okay, make sure I got it the right way. Okay, which way does it go? Let's bring in a paper. When you can't really tell which way it goes, just bring in some scrap paper and stamp it. Okay, it goes that way. This is like a, fall, a small scripted font, so it's kind of hard to see which way. Make sure nothing's on there. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp this over to the right of my bouquet. Make sure it's kind of lined up. Make sure that's straight. And we're going to put that right there. And let's hope it's straight. Okay, that looks good. Quickly clean my stamp off. All right. Let me close up this ink pad and I'm going to bring in that embossing folder again and I'm going to emboss this piece and I will be right back. Okay, 
let me move that out of the way and let me bring in my pieces here so you can see we got that nice subtle texture in the background and you can still see the greeting and our image so for this instead of gluing it straight down i'm going to actually pop this up on the back so i'm going to add some dimensionals now this is going to have a little bit more because i don't want this to be all saggy so i'm going to add eight dimensionals onto this okay make sure those are all down okay and it looks like i got all of them off and then I'm going to center this onto my card the right way. And there's just going to be a little thin border of that Cajun craze. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in these embellishments again. This time I'm going to use these darker ones. These are either cherry cobbler or they're Cajun craze. I'm not a hundred percent sure which color it is, but it's going to look good with this project. So I am going to add a large one. I typically, if there's two different sizes, I'll use a large and then two smaller ones. And I'll put that one there. And there we go. There is, I keep knocking over my reinkers. We don't want that. Okay, so there is the second card. Now let me bring in the first one that I did. So here's our first one. Now what I should have done is from my sample I should have moved this greeting down just a little bit so then this could have came down a little bit more but it still looks good. Um, it, the berry burst and that pebble path just seem to work together really well. So we have two nice fall colors. One a little bit more on the brighter side and one a little bit more subdued and and more of a neutral type of um, fall type tone. So if you like the projects that I may have made in this episode, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. It does help me in not only growing this channel, but it also helps me in building my Stampin' Up! business. Um, next, next Thursday, the final Thursday in September, I will be featuring the Country Lane Suite. Yeah, Country Lane Suite of products. That's the one that had like the milk can and the vase and all that. So I will be featuring that next Thursday. And then this coming Friday, well, when you're watching this, it's Thursday. Um, tomorrow night, I will be going live. Um, I'm not foreseeing anything happening in which I won't be going live. My Friday Night Live from last week was actually a kind of live where I recorded it earlier in, in well, it was actually the day before because we were supposed to get all this bad weather. I didn't know if I'd lose power. So um, I featured the More Than Autumn bundle. We created three wonderful projects. And then the following day, I had my in-person class where we did three more additional projects using that bundle. And that was a whole lot of fun. So next, um, so tomorrow I should be live and I'll be um, featuring the Regal Winter Suite of Products. Uh, that's in our new holiday mini and it's got lots of flowers and lots of rich um, tone uh, jewel colors. And I hope you would be able to join me. I will be live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So with that, everyone, you have a blessed one, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.